After Many a Summer Dies the Swan, by Aldous Huxley is a satirical novel that explores themes of mortality, the quest for immortality, and the decay of American culture. The narrative centers around the eccentric millionaire Joe Stoit, who is obsessed with prolonging his life. Stoit's mansion, which doubles as a fortress, becomes a microcosm of his broader ambitions and fears. His desire for eternal youth is ignited by the arrival of Dr. Obispo, a biologist who believes he has found the secret to extending human life by studying the biology of a 500-year-old carp. This scientific endeavor symbolizes humanity's perennial struggle against the natural limits of life. The novel juxtaposes the characters' individual quests for meaning and immortality with broader social and philosophical questions. Huxley's portrayal of Stoit is both critical and sympathetic, while he is depicted as a grotesque figure driven by fear and vanity, he also embodies a deeply human desire to escape the inevitable decay that comes with aging. This duality extends to other characters as well, such as Virginia Monsipal, Stoit's secretary and lover, who represents a more grounded perspective on life and death. Virginia's pragmatism and acceptance of mortality contrast sharply with Stoit's desperate clinging to life, highlighting the varied ways individuals cope with the knowledge of their finite existence. Huxley uses satire to critique contemporary American society, particularly its materialism and superficiality. Stoit's wealth and influence enable him to manipulate those around him, yet they also isolate him, creating a fortress of solitude that mirrors his inner emptiness. The novel's title, borrowed from Tennyson's poem, Tithonus, underscores this theme of immortality as a curse rather than a blessing. Just as Tithonus is granted eternal life without eternal youth, Stoit's quest for immortality seems destined to end in despair. The novel also delves into philosophical questions about the nature of time, existence, and the human condition. The character of Jeremy Portage, a British scholar hired by Stoit to catalogue his library, serves as a foil to Stoit. Portage's intellectual pursuits and contemplative nature contrast with Stoit's hedonistic and materialistic lifestyle. Through Portage, Huxley explores the idea that true immortality lies not in the prolongation of life but in the lasting impact of one's contributions to knowledge and culture. Huxley's writing is rich with irony and dark humor, which he uses to underscore the absurdity of the character's pursuits. The novel's setting, a sprawling estate in California, serves as a metaphor for the vast yet hollow promises of the American dream. Huxley's critique of American culture is particularly evident in his depiction of Hollywood, a place where reality and illusion blur, and where the pursuit of fame and youth often leads to moral and spiritual bankruptcy. The interplay between science and mysticism is another key theme in the novel. Dr. Obispo's scientific endeavors are paralleled by the spiritual quest of a group of monks who seek enlightenment through meditation and asceticism. This dichotomy reflects Huxley's own interest in the intersection of science and spirituality, a theme he would explore more deeply in his later works. In the end, After Many a Summer Dies the Swan offers a sobering reflection on the human condition. Stoit's eventual fate, a descent into madness and isolation, serves as a cautionary tale about the dangers of hubris and the futility of trying to escape the natural cycle of life and death. Huxley's novel remains a powerful critique of the lengths to which individuals will go to deny their mortality, and a reminder that the true measure of a life well lived lies not in its length but in its depth and impact. Through its rich characters and philosophical insights, the novel challenges readers to consider what it means to live meaningfully in a world where death is the only certainty.